Welcome to my little corner of the internet, where we celebrate creativity and growth. Hello, fellow enthusiasts. Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of Jess Guerrero Galvin. Jess Guerrero Galvin be June 1, 1910 D May 11. 1973 was a Mexican artist, a member of the Mexican moralism movement of the early 20th century. He began his career in Guadalajara but moved to Mexico City to work on mule projects in the ERS for the Secretary de Educación Biker and Comisión Federal de Electricidad. In addition, he did easel paintings, with major exhibitions in the United States and Mexico. In 1943, he was an artist in residence for the University of New Mexico, painting the Mural Union of the Americas joined in freedom, considered to be one of his major works. Guerrero Galvin was accepted as a member of the Salon de Lobstica Mexicana. Now, let's redirect our focus towards life and discover its significance in our narrative. Guerrero Galvin was born in Tunnel, Jalisco, in 1910, to a poor farming family of perpetual origin. At an early age, he showed a talent for drawing and received full support from his family to pursue art, and studied drawing in Guadalajara as a child. He traveled with his mother and sister to the United States just before he turned 15. The family's economic situation was very difficult and the struggle to survive affected his health. He contracted tuberculosis and never fully recovered. Just before his 15th birthday, he traveled to the United States with his mother and sister. During his stay, he drew on sidewalks with pieces of charcoal while working at a food stand. One day, a couple was impressed with this work and got him a scholarship to study at the Fine Arts School in San Antonio. When the family returned to Mexico, he entered the Guadalajara workshop of José Vizcarra working there from 1923 to 1924. Vizcarra required his students to copy reproductions of Rafael and Gerardo Murillo and draw perspective s of colonial buildings and nudes. This training influenced his later work and kept admiration for the masters of the Renaissance through his life. He also respected and admired Mesoamerican culture and art, Mexican portraits of the 19th century, the nationalism of Mexican moralism and the production of Picasso as well. While still in Guadalajara, he discovered the Bohemian Circle, which was one of the precursors of the Mexican moralism movement. Development of alternative schools for artists was also happening as old attitudes about art were being questioned and Dorero Galvin finished his schooling at one of them, the Escuela Libre de Pintura in Guadalajara. His talent was evident even in his earlies, and prompted his membership in the Banderas de Provincia Flags of the Province Group, which consisted of painters, poets and writers such as Rael Ongiono, José Guadalupe Zuno, Enrique Martinez Buloa and Augustin Years. He also founded a group called Tap Alliance of Fine Arts Workers, along with Andiono. Later in life, he joined the Liga de Escritores y Artistas Revolucionarios and the cultural missions of President Lazaro Cardenas. During his life, Guerrero Galvan was politically active, like many other artists of the Mexican moralism movement. He was a candidate for the Popular Party and later became a member of the Mexican Communist Party, remaining so until his death. For his work, he received an invitation to spend a year in the Soviet Union, where he received treatment for complications of tuberculosis. When he returned to Mexico from Russia, he learned of the imprisonment of C. Quiros. In response he went on a hunger strike, which affected his health. In his later life, he battled continued health problems along with problems with alcohol. For this reason, he, his wife Dabaki Goro, and five children moved to Kernavaca. Here he lived and painted until his death in 1973. In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting career and exploring its intricate connections to our topic. Gary Galvin began his career in Guadalajara. He was part of a group of artists called the Grupo de la Universidad at the Universidad de Guadalajara in 1925 and he worked on the campus from a studio in the former chapel of the Temple of Santo Tomas. The Universidad group also had as members Lean Moors, José Pérez Arias, Manuel Salizano, Enrique Celis, Leopoldo Bancolari, Robin Martinez Ramirez and Hans Christensen. 
At first, the group produced Impressionist work, then changed their style to what they called poetic neorealism with influence from European avant-garde such as Cubism and abstract art. In the late years, he painted his first mural at the University of Guadalajara called Fecundilid. In 1932, he organized the group Pintors Jovines de Jalisca with Francisco Rodriguez Caracola, Rael Ongiono, Antonio Servan, and Luis Cadenez Fonseca. Later members of the group included Luz Lasso, Rafael Espinoza, and Mario de la O. Fernandez. The group's first exhibition was at the Regional Museum of Guadalajara. In the early years, Guerrero Galvan moved to Mexico City to continue his career as many artists did at the time, attracted by the Mexican moralism movement. He began working on murals here with the Secretary de Educación Blica creating works for schools in the Alamos and Portales neighborhoods of the city. He also painted murals with the Comisión Federal de Electricidad after moving to Mexico City. In 1942, he was invited to be an artist in residence at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. Here he painted a fresco called Union of the Americas Joined in Freedom considered to be one of his principal works and also taught a course on Mexican contemporary painting. In 1947, he illustrated a book about Quetzalcoatl, written by Amaloa Brugmes. In addition to murals, Guerrero Galvan also did easel paintings. His main exhibitions include San Francisco in 1939, his first individual exhibition at the Guerra de Art Mexicano in Mexico City in 1941, exhibitions at the Museum of Modern Art in New York and the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston and the large individual exhibition at the Palacio de Bellas Artes in 1952. After his death the Museo de Art Moderno held a retrospect in 1977. In addition to the creation of works, he also taught art, beginning with the Escuela de Art para Trabajadores in 1936. They then went on to the Academia de Bellas Artes in 1938, then to the Escuela Nacional de Artes Psicas in 1939, teaching there for 25 years. He also did work in stage sets and costumes for the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico. Guerrero Galvan was accepted as a member of the Salón de la Postica Mexicana. As we enter this new phase, let's analyze artistry from different angles and evaluate its significance. Guerrero Galvan was one of the most prolific figurative painters from 20th century Jalisco, part of the Mexican moralism movement. While best known for mural painting, the artist also worked on canvas, lithography and illustration, noted as a draftsman and colorist. His important works include Fecundidad en el Olimpo House, La Unión de los Américas Bajo la Egida de la Libertad, La Nia, Jurez Neo, El Retrato de la Sierra de Macatla, El Suo, La Danza de los Venados, La Terra and El Gnesis del Popol Va. His style has been characterized as magical realism and poetic, with influences from Italian painting, Jalisco folk art and other aspects of Mexican culture. Elements in his work include eye expressions indicating placidity in his figures, eyes gazing into infinity and the lack of emotion in the lips. Although he was political in his personal life and part of the moralism movement, his artwork did not have a political or social message. Recurring themes in his easel work is the reality of the Mexican child and a woman on her own with a child, depicting a woman as a mother above all. These are often on sparse settings and the children can seem to be in a kind of limbo. He was also noted as a portrait painter, with many of his best featuring women and children. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of this video.